hello could you please uh, confirm that you hear and see what i have shared on my screen Could you please confirm that you hear me? You can write it here in the text box. Thank you, thank you. Thank you and welcome to today's DV Powers webinar. Uh, today's topic is how to perform a battery capacity test. My name is Kosta Mihic and I'm an application engineer here at DV Power. I will be holding today's presentation. If you have, if, if you have any questions during the presentations, uh, please write them in the questions tab and we will do our best to answer all of them. Also, if you want to contact me directly, you can do so by writing me an email, which you have written on the screen. As well as any other device, in order to remain reliable, stationary batteries require maintenance and care over their service life. They must be reliable and provide power whenever it is required from them. And for that reason, different test methods which allow us to evaluate batteries' conditions have been developed. Uh, they are important in the evaluation of battery state of health, and today we will talk about the most important one the most important one, uh, battery capacity test. Uh, here you can see the agenda of today's presentation. As you can see, we will go over some typical applications of batteries and some uh, relevant standards which define maintenance and testing of batteries. Then we will mention all the test types, uh, define what a good battery is and talk about how to perform a capacity test. We will also mention the myths about capacity testing and the importance of voltage measurement during the capacity test. After all, as a conclusion, we will give you a true solutions for battery testing. Uh, batteries, as we know, can be found in a wide range of applications uh, in electric power systems. Uh, they can be found in the electric generator stations and substations where they are used for powering the protection and control of switches and relays, uh, telecommunication systems where they support phone services, especially emergency services, in industrial applications as, as a backup power of computers, especially financial, financial data and information. Uh, they also uh, serve as a backup power for the hospitals where the power outage is not an option for people on life support machines and instruments. Lately, uh, batteries are being increasingly used in the automotive industry and electric vehicles. When the power outage occurs, uh, diesel engines will start and the electricity will come back. Uh, but in that little amount of time, while diesel engines are starting, the whole system relies only on batteries. And they must be reliable in order to give the power needed for the system. As we all know, batteries are energy storage devices that degrade over time. So in order to determine their current condition, which is crucial to know because of their importance, uh, they need to be properly maintained and tested every once in a while. Maintenance and testing procedures are defined by relevant standards IC and IEEE. As we see in this uh, next slide, uh, 
there are different standards for different chemistries and different types of batteries. Uh, we have IEEE and uh, IEC standards for vented lead acid batteries, uh, standards for valve regulated lead acid batteries or VRLA as as well as standards for nickel cadmium batteries. All these standards are similar, meaning that they all define tests which need to be performed and how often you need to perform them. We have several uh, different types of battery tests and uh, we can divide them as follows. And as we can see on this slide, uh, visual inspection, uh, we can check monthly for any leakage of the battery electrolyte. Specific gravity, knowing the specific gravity of the electrolyte in batteries uh, gives insight into the level of charge. Due to chemical reactions during discharge, the density of the sulfuric acid electrolyte or its specific gravity decreases. We can check float voltage by measuring it. Uh, we can also check individual cell condition. Uh, we can measure internal resistance. Uh, for internal resistance measurement, the different test methods are, are performed in order to determine internal battery resistance, uh, DC test method, AC conductance or resistance measurement, and electrochemical imp impedance spectroscopy. Internal resistance measurement uh, have, have to be performed uh, upon the installation of battery in order to have a baseline value to compare each subsequent measurement with it. Uh, capacity test or also called discharge test as a most important and most relevant test of which we will speak in the details a little bit later. Uh, we here now have an example of IEEE 450 2010 VLA uh, battery inspection standard which defines relevant maintenance and testing procedures for vented lead acid batteries. We can see tests and measurements we must do on monthly basis, quarterly basis and on annual basis. Uh, we mentioned uh, most of them, visual inspection, float voltage, charger output voltage and current, amb ambient temperature, battery string voltage, electrolyte levels and uh, pilot cell voltage, temperature and specific gravity are the tests that, that are performed monthly uh, quarterly we check specific gravity and cell, cell temperature for 10 percent of the cells and annually we perform it for all cells and connection resistance is also performed annually and capacity test intervals are performed annually with 25 percent of expected service life of a battery uh, this is uh, also another visual presentation of another standard, uh, uh, IEEE 1188-2005 1, standard, which define maintenance and testing procedures for well-regulated lead acid uh, batteries. And as we can see, it is quite similar, like IEEE 450 standard for vented lead acid batteries. IEEE are European standards, and they are sli slightly different from the USA NERC standards. Uh, as we mentioned, NERC standards, uh, here it is, a visual presentation of, of it. Uh, it is a little bit different compared to European standards. Uh, here is the list and frequency of tests that are need to be performed. IEEE standard is, as we saw, more strict than this. And it means that if you buy a battery that is in according with the IEEE standard, it is also in according with the NERC standard. But, uh, it is not like that, vice versa. If you buy the battery that is in accordance with uh, this standard, uh, it does not have to be compliable with the European IEEE. Uh, a good battery. A good battery is a battery that is manufactured and tested, test, tested in according to standards. There are a lot of tests in standards and one of them is a voltage measurement. It is a simple way of checking a battery's health, but it is quite unreliable. We can say it is unreliable because if the measured voltage is good, that does not mean that the battery is good, but if a voltage is bad, it can be an indicator of a bad battery. You cannot decide to remove the battery or even one cell based on the voltage measurement. It is only an indicative test. 
For example, if we have two batteries with different capacities, as we see here, 12 volts battery, one is 100 amp hours and the other is 70 amp hours, both when charged uh, will have the same voltage level, but as we can see, their capacity is not the same, but they are both charged at the same level. Uh, regarding the other parameters, uh, when you buy a battery, uh, you will get its documentation in a table that probably looks something like this. It contains a lot of information of a battery, dimensions, height, weight, nominal voltage, etc. And the most important is this one, a battery capacity. What this part of table means? Uh, for the first battery, you have a battery capacity of 224 amp hours defined for C10 rating test. And that means when you are testing this battery that you will use a 10 hour test. Parameter 1.8 1, 1 volt per seconds means that volts per cell means that we have a 1.8 volts per cell and we have to set up voltage uh, limit 1.8 multiplied by numbers of cell we have. Current that will be used in testing this battery is 224 divided by 10. If we have a more powerful device for battery testing, we can perform a C5 rating test and the uh, current in that case would be 202 divided by 5 and we will perform a 5 hour test with discharge current of 40.4 amps. Uh, 202 amp hours is C5 rating uh, capacity of the same battery. Uh, the second value of capacity for a C5 rating test is smaller than a C10 rating uh, capacity because we use a higher current to perform the test. And the voltage drop as well as heating of the battery is greater because of that higher power. Uh, those parameters ultimately affect the capacity reduction. Important thing that needs to be said here is that you need to know that it is crucial to perform the test, uh, the same test every time when testing the battery. When you install the battery, if you perform a C5 test, every time after that you have to perform a C5 test and that way you will have a trending of your battery and it will be easy to notice when the battery capacity is starting to decrease. When the battery capacity starts to decrease more quickly than before, you can take notice and be prepared for its end of life in a year or two, and you have you have, you know you have to buy a new battery to overcome that problem. Why we need the why we need to consider the battery capacity test? Because it is a mandatory test according to all standards, and it is the only test that can be used to determine the state of health of a battery. It is a proven way to determine the battery capacity and its condition. All other tests are just indicative tests and their results cannot be uh, used in a deci decision whether to remove and change the battery or not. Uh, only results from a capacity test can be used in that cause. In that cause. Uh, well, a capacity test clarifies suspicious, suspic suspicious results ob obtained by internal resistance uh, measurement and other test methods. Actually, there are standards, standards that dictating that you have to perform internal resistance tests. And if you get the result of resistance test with, high, with values higher than before, uh, you have to perform a capacity test in order to know whether to remove the battery or not. Uh, many battery manufacturers will only accept the battery capacity tests when questioning battery performance for warranty. As I previously said, uh, battery capacity test is the most important parameter for condition assessment and it is a reliable method for testing your battery. It is a slow but safe test. Uh, as we saw, the C5 test is a five hour long test, but it is even longer when you count in the preparation for the test, mounting equipment and connecting everything. Uh, after performing the discharge test, the battery needs to be recharged. Uh, this is a key test according to all standards. It is a part of acceptance test uh, that is first test when installing a battery. 
uh, a capacity test is a part of periodical testing that uh, that is a performance test that needs to be done annually or every 25 percent of expected battery lifetime whichever is less or if we suspect if there is any problem with the battery as i already said if we perform the internal resistance test then we suppose if there, there is a problem it is good to verify that by performing a capacity test and now we will show you how, <coughs> how to perform a capacity test well for first we need to prepare our site for capacity test uh, the load to the battery needs to be adequately backed up with parallel string but of course modern day devices can perform a capacity test while battery is still online and our devices can do so but we will talk about that part a little bit later and so it is not needed to have two strings also you need uh, to check some key parameters before initiating the test uh, first to measure individual cell voltage to measure float voltage to check cell conditions and the temperature of electrolyte in 10 percent or more of the cells in the battery before pressing the start button we need to determine crucial test parameters such as test time and voltage uh, test current and while doing that uh, we need to follow the manufacturer defined rates we already spoke about how to determine the test current for which c rating in this table we already have the current values for certain c rate tests uh, test time c10 c5 etc it means that we have to perform a 10 hour or 5 hour test and voltage is defined by the value on the left multiplied by number of cells in a battery string and i have to emphasize again that you need to use the same rates during the service life to do the same test every time when doing the capacity or so-called discharge test and uh, we perform that test with our battery load units how do we connect the battery load unit to the battery it is quite simple if it is if it is a single mode test you just connect the current cables on the blu and the battery uh, you connect the main plus terminal of the blu device uh, with the main plus plus terminal on the battery the process is the same with the main minus terminal if you are testing batteries online or under the load or if you are using the additional load unit bake cell series you will connect them in the same way main plus terminal of the blu and the bake cell on the main plus terminal of the battery and the same will be applied with the main minus terminal uh, so the main minus terminal of the blu and the B bxl on the main minus terminal of the battery and you will use the current uh, probe uh, the current probe is used to measure the current your regular uh, regular load uh, draws from the battery uh, for example if you want to perform a, a test with 50 amps and your regular load already takes 10 amps from the battery current clamp will measure those 10 amps and the blu will compensate with 40 amps and in the end you will have the 50 amps uh, test discharge test as you want during your capacity test if the current of the regular regular load changes during the test for example from 10 amps to 20 amps the blu will get the information from the current clamps clamp and it will change its current to 30 amps in order to keep the total current uh, 50 amps as we said before the same applies if you want to use additional load bxl series with the blu How to perform a capacity test well after connecting the blu or the battery load unit to the battery we have a list of parameters we have to determine before performing the capacity test as we already said in previous slides we have to determine test time and voltage test current and of course set the limits test time depends on the available test time battery size and capability of test equipment uh, the end voltage is dependent of the lowest allowable voltage in the substation and the battery manufacturer specification we already said how to determine test current you can check in the battery manufacturer's table for the actual battery 
uh, by setting the limits we are protecting the battery from deep discharge we are also protecting the equipment and by protecting the equipment we protect ourselves here you can see pictures of screens of our devices with all those parameters set of course before performing uh, the capacity test you have to charge a battery up to float or maximum voltage in order to determine the full capacity of that battery connect it to a dummy load and in the, this case a dummy load is our battery load units uh, that simulates the real battery load uh, after that you set the, the test parameters as we already said uh, current or power time and limits and then after eight ten hours uh, the result of a capacity test is a single number so the result of a capacity test is a single number and it is expressed as a per percentage uh, this is an example if a manufacturer states that a c10 capacity of a battery is 1200 amp hours and we measure that the capacity of a battery is 1134 amp hours which is 94.5 percent of the manufacturer uh, state uh, what does that mean uh, is our battery good or bad and do we need to replace it well in according to standards uh, the limit for battery capacity is 80 percent and this battery is a good one because its capacity percentage is a lot higher than 80 percent limit and we can say that this battery does not need replacement it can be put it can be put in service for one additional year and we will test them again next year as standards require uh, as we all know there are certain myths related to battery capacity testing uh, myth number one is that capacity test is expensive well if you put pros and cons you will see that it actually is not expensive at all when you finish the capacity test you will be aware of capacity of your battery and you will know the state of health of it but uh, it means that you will know whether the battery will provide the power when needed or will it or it will not it is crucial thing to be aware of because you cannot allow the mistake to happen because those mistakes are too often expensive and have big consequences without capacity uh, test uh, the mistake is inevitable and you simply cannot know whether the battery is good enough for another year, year or years of service or not. Also, it is a myth that the capacity test ruins the battery because batteries are manufactured for a few hundreds uh, cycles of charging and discharging. And one of those cycle uh, every year does not mean much comparing to those few, few hundreds. Uh, myth number two uh, is that you need to equalize batteries before the performance test that is not true you just need to charge the battery up to float voltage and then to perform the test and the myth number three is that you need to stop the test when the first cell reaches the final voltage uh, that is not true you must continue the test in order to determine if there is more than one cell that will reach its final voltage and to determine the exact number of cells that needs to be replaced after the test is done the replacement is of course needed uh, for the cells that reach their final end voltage limit during the test uh, here you can see the battery or cell usage over time in this graph over time we have service zone replacement zone and failure zone and of course uh, curves of voltage capacity and internal resistance of a battery through those zones service zone is of course a zone where everything is working as it should the replacement zone is the zone where the battery is still working properly but with a tendency to get in a failure zone which is inevitable after a certain amount of time uh, the only test that will determine for sure if the battery is in a replacement zone is a capacity test as we can see the battery impedance is almost constant throughout the service and replacement zone but the, before the failure zone we will so, we will see if the battery needs a replacement or not uh, the voltage 
uh, we, by measuring the voltage of the battery, we cannot determine whether it is ready for replacement or not, because even if the battery is in failure zone and definitely does not have the required capacity, the voltage of a battery can still be in uh, the previous two zones. So the only test that will for sure provide you with information of your battery state of health is a battery capacity test. Uh, standards are also dictating that while performing the capacity test, you need to measure the voltage of each cell in your string. Uh, battery capacity is crucial information for the battery performance, but we also need to be aware of the state in which every cell of the battery is. Uh, we need to know that, of course, because the chain is strong as its weakest link link and that's why you need to know the condition of each cell individually uh, what do we get by measuring cell voltages well by measuring the cell voltages of each and every cell we will determine which cells are bad and the need to be replaced and by doing so we will increase the whole string lifetime while performing the capacity test if the voltage of one cell falls below the end voltage limit, you can pause the test, remove the bad cell, and continue the test after you have done that. Uh, by continuing the test, you will determine if there are any more bad cells that have to be removed and replaced afterwards. All other cells that did not reach the end voltage limit at the end of the test are good and can be put back into service. As we can see, voltage measuring is important and priceless because it allows you to replace just bad cells of the string instead of replacing the entire battery string. Uh, measuring cell voltages, there are two ways for measuring cell voltages, uh, manual and automatic. Uh, manual measuring of cell voltages requires periodical human engagement and automatic measuring of voltage does not require any human engagement during the test. Uh, DV Power has solutions, of course, for both of them. Our solution uh, for automatic cell voltage measurement is BVS or Battery Voltage Supervisor System. It has two models, BVS1 and BVS4. Uh, main difference between modules is that BVS1 module measures the voltage of one cell, while the BVS4 model measures the voltage of four cell cells at once. As you can see in these two slides, this is the BVS1 module and this is the BVS4 module. Uh, to underline the things we already said, you must not stop the test while, uh, when the first battery cell fails, because maybe there are more of them that will also reach the end voltage by the end of the test. While performing the capacity test, you pause uh, the test and remove the bad cell after you acknowledge that you have one. But you must not stop the test. Here on the screen, you, you can see uh, the results of cell voltages measurement uh, represented in our DVB Win software. We saw why it is important to measure the voltage of each cell in the string, but also the total string voltage needs to be used as the test termination criteria, and it should be measured during the entire test. DV Power has solutions for performing the capacity test on your batteries. As you can see, we have uh, three series, uh, T series, C series, and A series. A blue T series, well, it is intended for use in telecommunication systems. They can be used for testing the batteries from 0 0.8 uh, up to 70.5 volts and maximum discharge current is 350 amps with maximum power of 19.2 kilowatts. They are lightweight solutions that weight only 12.8 uh, kilograms up to 15 kilograms. A uh, user can select one of the three discharge modes, constant current, constant power and constant resistance. 
Additionally, different battery duty cycles can be simulated using a user selectable discharge profiles. Uh, discharge parameters can be monitored in real time during the capacity test. Uh, it has a 4.3 inch touch, uh, touch screen that shows us overall battery, overall battery voltage, discharge current, discharge test time and capacity during and the entire test. Also, this uh, capacity tester BLUT series is compatible with DVB-WIN software. A user can view a detailed detail numerical and graphical presentation of key parameters and create reports in various formats. In the table on the right, uh, we can see differences between the two models of T-series, BLU-110T and BLU-220T. The differences are nominal voltage levels, levels and currents on different, different voltage levels as well as their weight. The second series is BLU or battery load unit A series. It is intended to use for the batteries in substations and industrial batteries. Here we can see their operate, operating voltage levels are from three to 500 volts and their maximum current is 240 amps with maximum power of 90.7 kilowatts. All these technical informations are available on our DV Power site and you can also download brochures for more details. And last but not the least, uh, we also have our BLU-C series. Uh, it is the newest series in our battery testing products portfolio. They can be used for testing batteries of any types uh, with uh, voltage levels from 5.5, 25 up to 800 volts with currents from 1 to 300 amps. Uh, maximum power of BLU C series is 42 kilowatts. Uh, they can also be used to test batteries in service with selecting one of four discharge modes uh, constant current, constant power, constant resistance, and uh, constant voltage. Additionally, different battery duty cycles can be simulated using user-selectable discharge profiles. All of the results can be monitored and interpreted numerically and graphically on a 7-inch display, which means that there is no need for the use of a computer, but if you want to use it, of course, we have our DVB Wind software that you can work with. As you can see on this slide, uh, this is the interpretation of how a test looks like on a 7-inch display of battery load unit C series. Everything is visible and as we already said, there is no need uh, for the use of an additional computer. Here is an example of uh, cell voltage results that can also be displayed on uh, the BLU-C device. We have uh, different models of BLU-C series. As you can see on this slide, 300C, 400C, 500C, 600 and 800C. Uh, their differences are voltage levels, discharge currents, dimensions, weight and uh, power, maximum power. You can see how our devices look like and their main technical specifications here. For example, our model Blue 400C can be used for testing batteries from 5.25 up to 300 volts DC. Uh, it is maximum. Its maximum current of 300 damps can be achieved at voltage level from 110 to 120 volts. The C ma maximum power of this mod model is uh, 42 kilowatts and it has a seven inch display for numerical and graphical test interpretation. And the weight of this device it is 22 kilograms. Uh, widest uh, voltage range, of course, uh, have our B BLU 800C 
moto. Uh, in this slide, uh, we can see a table uh, when you, where you can see different maximum discharge currents for different nominal voltage levels presented for each device of BLUC series. You can select the appropriate device for your use based on this table. You can also find this table at our website, uh, www.dv-power.com. Uh, for more details, you can also download our brochures for any series mentioned today. And I would like to say that uh, that is all for today. Feel free to contact me if you can have any questions regarding the battery testing, and I will give my best to answer all of them. I hope my colleague uh, that is a moderator answered some of your questions, and now I will see if I can help him in the question box. My email is, as you can see, costa.m at dv-power.com and feel free, feel free to contact me. I can see my colleague Kari Chadnan <clears throat> have answered most of the questions.
Well, as I can see, my colleague answered most of the questions. If you have any more questions, feel free to contact us via email. Thank you for attending and goodbye.